Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Welcome to another video about the wonderful world of tabletop games. Today we're going to look at Firefight 2nd Edition by Mantic Games. Mantic were very kind and sent me this in the mail. It was a complete surprise. I wasn't expecting uh, to see it and I'm very excited about it because it's their kind of skirmish sci-fi game. It's set in their sci-fi universe of Warpath and it uses, of course, all the sci-fi miniatures from the entire Mantic range. In here as well, you get a Force List book which gives you all the stats and abilities of everything in the sci-fi range of Mantic models. So there's a whole lot of variety in this set. Um, I'm going to unbox it for you now. If you choose to spend your valuable time watching this video, you'll see what's in the box, but you'll also uh, hear a bit of discussion by me about the rules because I've gone through the how to play videos, some very good how to play videos on the Mantic website, and had a little think about the rules. Haven't played it yet, but I will in the future. I'm also going to paint up these miniatures uh, we'll get a battle report to the table and we'll see how Fire Flight 2nd Edition plays. But enough of my yakking, let's open this box and check it out. Okay, very attractive box there, nice and thick, look at that. Now it is another one of these flimsy Mantic boxes. They do pack all their games like this. I've whinged about that before so I won't go on about it. But I will say, however, they may be flimsy boxes but they pack them full because... Whoops, I've got it upside down. It's packed with stuff. Look, it's so much is just falling out. So you do get a lot of stuff in a Mantic box. I've got to say, we've got heaps and heaps of miniatures. We have the Enforcers in here and the Marauders. Now, if you know your Mantic background, the Enforcers are sort of the super soldiers, the human super soldiers. Very well known from Dead Zone, of course. And the Marauders are basically space orcs. Um, so you've got a heap of those here. How many miniatures are there in total? There are over 70 miniatures. So you get 40 Marauder Commandos, 4 Ripper Suits, and you get 20 Enforcers, 5 Peacekeepers, and 2 Jet Bikes. So I've seen all these miniatures before. There's nothing new in the way of uh, miniatures here, but the great thing is, of course, you can use this in all Mantic games. If you're playing Warpath, you can use these miniatures. If you're playing Dead Zone, you can use them. So I'll have quite a decent selection of Enforcers for Dead Zone, which is exciting. And these are the first Marauders I've got too, so I can use the Marauders in Dead Zone. And you don't have to buy separate army books and everything. I've got all the Force lists in the uh, core box of the, of the game. So, great stuff. Um, nothing to see here yet but sprues, but I'll put these together and show you the miniatures. You get a very generous amount of dice. This game uses eight-sided dice. Uh, what's that? Two, four, six, eight. There's 16 dice there. And also some special command dice. Uh, like Dead Zone, you roll command dice at the start of each turn and you can use those to give you command abilities and faction abilities and things like that. The rules, are, uh, they look really good. There's uh, elements from Kings of War, which is the... Um, the fantasy tabletop miniatures game that Mantic have, and also from Dead Zone. So they're sort of, you know, fine-tuning these all the time. This is the second edition, so it's being nicely fine-tuned. So I've got some MDF bases. Uh, Mantic use these for, you know, hero figures and larger bases. They use MDF bases. And here's your standard kind of Mantic 25mm bases. A whole bunch of those. A few extra miniatures. Some of these are plastic and some special ones are uh, resin as well. This is really good to see, a getting started uh, leaflet, and this is getting better and better in Mantic games. They used to really throw you into the deep end when you open one of their games, but now they're getting a sort of, you know, a, a document in there to get you started, and also to show you how to put the miniatures together. Um, before, again, you used to go online and just get PDFs, but it's really good to see these printed out as well. Uh, they don't go into huge amounts of detail, but it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. You've got bodies and... Basically, the bodies and legs are together, and then you just attach what weaponry you want to have. So you've got a lot of choice over the units that you put together. You want to give that a bit of thought before you start gluing your models together. Um, the other thing that you've got in here is um, a bunch of forced lists for a sort of starting uh, game. So they give you a suggested build for a starting game of... About 780 points either side. And then there's the starting scenario, which is control the intel. And uh, there's a little quick reference section at the end. 
Now, of course, you won't be needing that because you'll have a fantastic full summary and reference from the Esoteric Order of Gamers as soon as I can get around to making it. And uh, that will be very useful. And when I finish it, of course, I'll post it on my website, orderofgamers.com. Now you've got um, some nice counter sheets and good to see there's a nice thick cardboard. Two lovely colourful sheets of counters there. Nice thick cardboard and it, this is for things like um, activation tokens, uh, pinning tokens, objective tokens, things like that. Then in the bottom of the box you've got two thick books. You can see quite thick. You've got your rule book which has got, of course, all the rules and also some background material about the Warpath universe. We'll have a look at that in closer detail in a moment. And then, as I mentioned, the Force Lists book, uh, which has got all your stats for all the factions in the Warpath universe and pictures of the miniatures too. Let's have a closer look at that as well. So here's the rule book. As you can see, quite thick, soft cover book. It's got a nice varnish on the outside, good quality. The graphic design and everything is, is just getting better and better all the time on these Mantic rule books. The quality is just very high. So let's get into the rules. So you've got your stats here, and a lot of these things are very similar to Dead Zone. Uh, very easy stats because they're all numbers plus to roll on a D8. So for example, uh, for your assault strength, five plus. So you just need five plus on a D8. So just going through, you've got your type of unit, you've got your speed, which is a normal speed or a fast charge speed. You've got a shooting value, assault value, uh, an armor value, health points, nerve, height, uh, size of base, uh, the unit strength, which has to do with controlling objectives, and of course your um, army point score. And down here, weapon stats for the leader and warriors, and then you've got a whole lot of options, so you can do different options for your unit. A lot of flexibility in, in creating your units, giving them different weapons and things like that. That's your basic profile. Then we get into the rules. Now, command points. In this game, you roll a certain number of command dice, which are these ones. And commanders are super important in this game. Uh, you do a lot of measuring from the commanders. They have a 12-inch command range. And in that range, they can uh, give troops the benefit of uh, faction abilities and command abilities. So um, it's good to have a lot of command dice. And if you have multiple commanders, you can have multiple special dice as well. You roll these, it gives you a number of command points. And you have those um, per round. They get refreshed at the start of every single round. What do you do with command points, you ask? Well... There are basic things to do. You can get an extra activation. You can only do that once, but it gives you an extra activation, which can be you know, really handy if you're going in for an important turn. Um, you can also unpin units with it. So everyone can do those things, but you also have special command abilities. Uh, leaders can, have, can spend command points to do special command abilities uh, on their troops. And you get faction abilities as well. So... Uh, they're specific to your particular faction and give the troops a lot of uh, personality and uh, special abilities. So uh, that's an interesting thing. Line of sight rules here, some nice examples, which is good to see. Getting into terrain, uh, stuff like that. So the turn, here we go, there's the turn order. So it is alternating activations, which is excellent, of course. And like Dead Zone, it's broken into short and long actions. You can do one long action or two short actions. Now, one thing I really like to see about this is uh, things like the movement, because that what they've done is gone for a certain level of abstraction, which I think is great because it speeds up the rules and speeds up the gameplay. Personally, I am always on the side of fun when it comes to this games. these games. I'm not into heavy simulation and getting everything realistic and all that kind of stuff. Let's face it, it's sci-fi battles on distant planets. It doesn't have to be realistic. It has to be fun. So what they're doing in this one is doing a lot from the leader models. When you do your movement, you just move the leader model and then you move the rest of the unit in coherency with the leader. So that only means one measurement, one move, and then just move the rest in coherency with the leader. And also when you're shooting and stuff like that, you measure from the leader to the closest point of the target unit. So this makes things a lot faster and easier and actually reminds me of AT43, which is the old tabletop miniatures game, which also did a lot of measuring and firing from the leader. Uh, so it's good to see that kind of thing back. It really makes things easier and faster. 
ranged attacks, as I said, measure from the leader to the closest point. Got your standard shooting modifiers for cover and all that kind of stuff. Then you've got assault. Um, so assault is uh, there. It's quite interesting actually. The assault options. Um, you can charge with your fast move straight into assault, uh, in which case you'll get an uh, advantage in the assault. Or you can just do a short move. Now the differences are if you do the charge into combat. You get to resolve your attacks first before the defender can attack, which is pretty devastating. If you do a short move in, you both attack simultaneously. So that changes the, the strategy of assault a huge amount. Also, if the target unit has certain abilities like evade, control, fire, counter charge, these things like that, they can actually do things while you're charging them. So they might actually just run away, or they might shoot as you're charging towards them, or they might even charge back. So assault looks quite interesting. Um, if you're uh, going across a wall or something like that, your charge is hindered, uh, you get a disadvantage for that. Um, suppressive fire is another keyword. So there's all these things you can do in response to an assault, which are, are quite interesting. And, um, you know, shake up the strategy quite a lot. Combat resolution is really easy. You take a number of D8s equal to the dice value of each weapon being used. You roll them and apply any modifiers. Uh, those that equal or exceed the shoot value or the assault value, depending on what you're doing, hit. And then for each hit, you take a die and roll again, and you've got to equal or exceed the target's armor value to do damage. When you're shooting units or assaulting them, the leader gets removed last, so you remove all your other troops before the, the leader is left. Um, pinning, now this is a really important thing, I think, in skirmish games, is to have some kind of pinning mechanic. This is really good. If you have certain types of weapons which uh, can pin their targets, you get a pin marker, and that basically means that it gets uh, negative modifiers to hits and assault and nerve tests and things like that. The other thing is, is that it restricts their actions their next turn because they've got to spend a short action to immediately remove the pin marker as their first action when they next activate. So pinning is, is quite important, and I'm really pleased to see that as part of the rules. Nerve tests, of course, if you get reduced to 50% of your unit size, you have to make a nerve test at the end of the turn. Also, you might have to make nerve tests uh, for some psychic abilities, things like that. Uh, buildings are nicely simplified too. They're just broken into zones. In a normal one-story building, the bottom zone inside the building might be one zone, and then above on the roof might be a second zone. And basically, you just move the leader into contact with the building, and uh, then the rest of the unit is considered inside the building and then you can shoot and also uh, extend your command range starting from any point of the building which is again uh, slightly stylized but really nice uh, in terms of fast play lots of keywords of course for your distinctive types of special abilities and then we get into the missions so there's a good range of missions here uh, capturing intel uh, holding objectives that kind of thing you can see quite a lot. There's also narrative missions, which is nice to see. Greater focus on fun and in telling a story rather than more balanced or competitive play. And I'm, I'm always up for that. As I said, it's all about fun for me. I'm not so worried about, uh, you know, perfectly balanced play and all that kind of thing. So lots of options. And then at the back, we've got, our, you know, usual background material about the galactic co-prosperity sphere, which is you know, made up of evil corporations taking over planets. Uh, all the other factions, you've got your classic space elves and your space dwarves and all that kind of stuff as well. And of course, uh, the plague. Uh, so there you go. Absolutely chock block full, that rule book. And uh, a little overview of the rules, which look really nice. Let's have a quick look at the force lists book. And this is all about building your strike force for the game. Uh, you get a free command type. You can get troop, command specialist and support types. Sometimes good to have, or often good to have, multiple commanders because, as I said, each commander has a 12-inch range around them, so it may extend your command range so you can give your troops special abilities. And then we're going through all the factions. And the thing I love about this is we're getting lots and lots of pictures of the miniatures and all the different weapon types. There we go. So you can see them at a glance because... Sometimes it's a little bit hard to identify all the different different weapon types and things like that. These are the enforcers again, as you know from uh, Dead Zone. A nice vehicle there, uh, jet bikes, which is in which are in this set. 
So, they're great. All the different options. Now, if you're into building lists, there's certainly a lot to go on here. Forge Fathers, which are your space dwarves. There they are. Look at that. I love these tanks, they're great. Then we've got the GCPS, which is sort of your corporate troops. We've got this nice buggy figure. I've got one of these actually. I bought one of these for AT43, but I can use it for this game as well. Uh, your big mechs and just sort of your normal grunts of troops, marines. There's some more options. Marauders, again, your space orcs. So there they are, some good chunky figures. And as someone pointed out, I was reading about this. They're just nice chunky game pieces. I mean, I love Games Workshop figures. Of course, they're really detailed and everything, but they're so sort of spiky and finely detailed that sometimes you just want some good chunky figures that you can just pick up and move without poking your fingers or spiking yourself. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a completely different style of figure, but these are just good solid gaming pieces, which I quite like. They can uh, withstand a bit of punishment. There we go. Then we've got the plague. You can see oh, lots of options there. Basically space zombies and mutant creatures and things like that. There we go. And then finally the vermin, or the vermin, who are of course your uh, space rats. And they've got this big tunneling machine and these fast moving sphere things. They're pretty cool. And of course, we've got uh, a bunch of these in Dead Zone, the latest edition of Dead Zone. So I've painted them up roughly and I'll be uh, using those for this game as well. This is the great thing. You've got this interchangeability using the miniatures for all these different game system systems, depending on what type of game you want to play. So there's your Force Lists book. OK, I've made up my miniatures and as you can see, it's a very impressive amount of miniatures you get in this firefight starter set over 70 and I'm going to go through how I've made them up now of course you can make up your miniatures in any configurations you like you can come up with your own lists uh, but this is what I did so starting with the enforcers I've got two enforcer jet bikes here um, that will cost 80 points I've got my captain here. He's a peacekeeper captain and he's armed with a dominator rifle and wrist blade. He's 110 points. Then we've got two peacekeepers. One of them is armed with a burst laser, this guy here. Uh, that's 85 points. And two peacekeeper defenders. They've got those big shields and they've got dominator rifles as well for 80 points. Then we go on to the enforcers themselves. Uh, we've got two units here of assault enforcers, which are basically your, your close combat troops. They've all got laser pistols and wrist blades. And they've also got an incinerator as well. Here's the incinerator. And uh, their leaders, there's one leader figure each unit, and they've got an energy gauntlet. And that all comes up to 200 points. And then in the front here, two units of enforcer operatives armed with laser rifles and one in each of those units has got a burst rifle as well and again the leaders have energy gauntlets that's 260 points so that makes up 815 points for the enforcers now let's check out the marauders uh, we've got my leader over here this guy and he is a commando captain and he's got two commandos as well they're all armed with big axes uh, except this guy's got a power claw as well um, and that is 80 points. We've got two um, Ripper Maulers. They've got a buzzsaw and ram. They're 100 points. Nice chunky big figures, those ones. We've got two Ripper Rainmakers with rotary cannons and beamers. And, um, they're very nasty at 135 points. We've got two units of close combat troops. These are Brawlers. They're armed with pistols and claws. You can see I've already started just painting one with contrast paints there. I'm going to do a very quick job on these because there are so many of them. And that's just contrast paints. I haven't done any uh, highlighting or anything on that. As I said, two units of those guys, they're armed with pistols and claws. And one of them in each unit has got a flamer. 
Now I've got a unit here of 10 of them and a unit of seven. I had to do a smaller unit because I wanted to make up some um, commandos here to stick with the captain. So um, that's a bit of a shame, just three more models and you could have had two units of, of 10 models each, but I had to take some out for a captain. It would have been nice to have a separate captain model. That's my only criticism. Um, and then we've got two uh, long range troops. These are commandos armed with rifles. They're both 10 Marauder units. One of them's armed with a heavy machine gun, as you can see, this guy here. And this one is armed with a missile launcher, which is this guy. So a little bit of work putting all those together, but really you want to make up your list first before you start uh, building them, um, because you've got all of the uh, different um, options for weapons and things like that. So you want to work out what you're going to do. Um, the only other thing was that the for the normal rifles for the Marauders, we've got this rifle here, and then this type of rifle here. So these are both rifles. There wasn't enough to have just one type of rifle, but that's okay because you know they're Marauders, so they use a, a bunch of different things. So I've scattered them within those two units, so they have a, a bunch of different weapons, but they're all rifles. So what we end up with is an Enforcer force of 815 points and a Marauder force of 805 points. And that's certainly enough to play some good games of Firefight. Um, an impressive number of models and they're all good. Should be relatively easy to paint. I'm going to paint these pretty quickly with contrast paints and get them on the table. Well, my friends, that's my first look at Firefight 2nd Edition starter set by Mantic Games. Looks very impressive. As you can see, there are lots of miniatures in the set and they all look really nice. Now, I should point out uh, these models are from my Dead Zone set. This is from 1st Edition Dead Zone. Um, and you also get a whole lot of these in the new edition of Dead Zone. Um, so lovely terrain models from Mantic as well. If you want tips on how to paint these, go back through my old videos because I did a five part series on Dead Zone 1st edition and not only showed you how to paint these, but also how to paint the Enforcers and the Plague from that edition as well. Um, I've also got my uh, Vermin and uh, GCPS troops from Dead Zone 3rd edition, which I've painted up quickly and I can use them for this game. But I do have a Dead Zone 3rd edition uh, battle report coming very soon, so you can check them out in action with that great game as well. Um, so much to play here with Mantic Games, they're really doing some nice stuff. I'm quite impressed by these rules. I really like the fact that you do measuring and firing from the leader. Makes things a lot faster in play. I'm also intrigued by the uh, assault rules and the fact that you have those assault reactions. So you have quite a lot of options you can choose from if you have the right weapons with the right keywords, um, if you get charged or attacked in, uh, in close combat. You can fire back and run and do all those things. So it'll be fun playing around with those rules as well. I hope you've enjoyed this look at Firefight 2nd Edition. I'm going to be filming a battle report for this as soon as I paint up this huge amount of miniatures and you can see the game in action. I'm Peter, also known as Universal Head, from the Esoteric Order of Gamers. I really recommend you go and check out the website at orderofgamers.com because you'll find more than 400 rule summary and reference sheets that I've professionally designed. Yes, I'm a graphic designer in real life. And uh, there's also one for Firefight because uh, since I started filming this video, I've been working hard and created one for Firefight for you. So go along to the website, download it, print it out, laminate it, stick it in your box. You'll really like it. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. As always, subscribe, please, and hit all notifications if you haven't done so. Uh, check out my Twitter and Facebook and Instagram feeds and check me out on Patreon if you want to support me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Good gaming.